Lord, how majestic is your name in all of this world. How majestic. Good morning, Hoosier live streaming friends and those who are present here this morning. It's great to greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who say, I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all folks unto me. And because of that, we are going to realize that he reigns in our hearts. We're going to realize that Christ the Lord has risen today. We're going to realize that you too will see Jesus here today. You're going to realize that he's real in your heart, and you're going to realize how great love he has for us. No greater love than the love that he would die and even be resurrected for us. Welcome to this Resurrection Sunday. And let's praise God for his son that he gave to us to arise so that we can live and have hope for tomorrow. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. We welcome our alkaline to come and bring in the light of Christ. And this light will represent Christ and Christ's humane nature as the gospel candle will be lit. And this light will represent Jesus in his divine nature as the gospel candle will be lit. Receive Christ in his humane and divine nature for our lives on this Resurrection Sunday. Lord God, we thank you for this day that you have made for us to realize the opportunities in our life because of the resurrected Christ. Thank you for what will happen that we can't even imagine right now but cause us, O oh Lord God, to have our eyes open and our heart receptive to the blessings you have for us today. That when we leave this place, we would know that we are still in your presence and you go with us. Bless all of those who are here to act in magnifying your presence here with us today. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. As our praise seems to come, you may be seated and testify as to whether or not Jesus reigns on this day. Praise the Lord, Hoosier. Praise the Lord. Oh, one more time. Let me give you time to get yourselves together. Praise the Lord, Hoosier. He is risen. He is risen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We welcome you into the house of the Lord this morning on this Resurrection Sunday. For we have come to praise him, we have come to bless his name, and this is your personal invitation to stand as you're able, put your hands together, and let us praise and worship Jesus because he rose. Hallelujah. Give it 
praises to our King, for He is the King of Kings. We sing the praises to our King, for He's the King of Kings. We sing the praises to our King, for He is the King of Kings. We sing the praises to our King, for He's the King of Kings. Give Him, give Him glory, for He's the King of Kings. Give Him glory, for He's the King of Kings. Give him glory, for he's the king of kings. Give him glory, for he's the king of kings. All hail, all hail, King Jesus. All hail, all hail, Emmanuel. He reigns, he reigns. forever and ever. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If you would, please stand for our morning hymn, Christ the Lord is Risen Today, which is found in your hymnal on page 302.
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, who's your family? Good morning, who's your family and friends and all who are viewing us via live streaming. Happy Easter Day. Happy Easter Day. You know, when we were kids, you know, we had that little speech and at the end, we always said, Happy Easter Day. Yeah, Jesus will. <laughs> My name is Kay Wilkie and I will be highlighting just a few of the morning announcements. And before I do anything, I would like to welcome all who are visiting with us this morning. If you are visiting, please stand, remain standing until you have been welcomed by our pastor, Reverend Gary Dean. All visitors, please stand. Amen. Amen. Amen, let's give them a round of applause this morning. Come on now, you can do better than that, come on. Let me just say to all of those of you who are visiting with us for the first time here at the Hoosier Memorial United Methodist Church, present in our sanctuary, as well as those of you who are viewing us via our live stream telecast. On behalf of the congregation, the officers, and the staff here at Hoosier, we welcome you to our Easter resurrection celebration here at Hoosier Memorial on this beautiful God-given Sunday morning. We do realize that you have a choice in where you choose to worship. And we thank God that you have chosen to come and to share your presence with us here on this Resurrection Sunday morning. We do hope and pray that in return, we will be able to say something or do something that will be spirit-filling and uplifting to you. Something that would encourage you to seek a deeper and more meaningful relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If indeed, my friends, we should leave this place in better shape spiritually, physically, socially, and emotionally than we were before we arrived, Surely the aim of Christ will be accomplished in all that we will say and all that we will do here on this Easter Sunday morning. Can't guarantee you a lot of things, but I guarantee you this. On the front of your worship bulletin there, you will find all of my contact information. Amen? Please know that if you call me, you will get an answer. Amen? Huh, don't believe me? Try it and see. All right? So I say to you this morning, we welcome you once, we welcome you twice, we welcome you three times. Welcome to the house of the Lord, where the spirit and the love of God abides in each and every heart present here, each and every Sunday morning. And now my Christian friends, won't you stand? Take just a moment to greet your neighbor this morning. Tell them good morning, happy Easter to you. God loves you and so do I, let us stand. So glad you came. We welcome you. To praise the Lord and to magnify His name. We love you.
right? Mm -hmm. Our announcements can be found in your morning bulletin. And those of you who are viewing us via live stream, those announcements can be viewed online. But I will only highlight two of these announcements. The deadline to submit your ad for this year's Women's Day program is this coming Wednesday, April 3rd. All ad contributions are due in the church office by Thursday, April the 4th. If you have any questions, the contact information is listed in the bulletin. All right, all right. The Women's Day lunch, luncheon will be held on Saturday. Again, it will be held on Saturday. Please make note of it on April 27th at 11 o'clock a.m. And I hope I pronounced this right, Islam Event Center, which is located in College Park. And all of that information is also found in your bulletin. At this time, we have a special announcement from our Women's Day co-chair, Candace Brown and Robin Hines Moyer. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Hoosier family, and happy Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Amen. As Women's Day co-chairs, we want to continue to engage you all with upcoming Women's Day activities and provide a couple of highlights for this year's celebration leading into Worship Day on April 20, 28th. Our theme for this year is Hoosier's Women Living a Life of Love Empowered by God's Living Water. The color theme for this year is Shades of Blue because in the Bible, blue represents the heavens, the Holy Spirit, and the Word of God. Amen. Mm. In Exodus 24:10, when Moses, his sons, and the seven elders of Israel went up to Mount Sinai to worship God, they saw him, they saw God, and described the pavement under his feet as being bright as the blue sky. If you ask Candace and I to describe the women of Hoosier, the, symbol, the symbolism of the color blue resonates and is well represented right here in this congregation. Why the color blue? Because blue, the color blue represents spirituality, inner peace, and calmness. Blue also represents healing, as well as intuition, imagination, inspiration, and responsibility. Dark blue means trust, dignity, intelligence, strength, reliability, and authority. Bright blue means cleanliness, strength, dependability, and cool, cold coolness. The sky blue, as it is today, conveys peace, serenity, and infinity. And lastly, light blue represents refreshing and friendliness. Co-chair Candace and I grew up here in the Hoosier family as youth, not so long ago. <laughs> During, well. our, <laughs> during our planning meetings, we reminisced on our upbringings and being immensely surrounded by tons of love, prayers, support, motivation, inspiration from many of the women right here in the Hoosier family, of which some have gone on to be with the Lord, with our Lord. With gratitude, we humbly thank every woman here in the Hoosier congregation and Hoosier women worshiping with us in the live streaming audience for being impactful in our lives that have shaped us and molded us to be the Christian women we are today. Again, thank you, women of Hoosier. And now I want to turn it over to our, um, my amazing co-chair for a special announcement. Good morning, Hoosier. Today is a glorious day. It's a day that our Lord Jesus Christ lives. All praises to God. The women of Hoosier, are, we are full of excitement. It's time to honor and recognize nine anointed, divine, extraordinary Hoosier women. We are elated to introduce the nominees for our inaugural Legacy of Love in Action Award. If you would stand when I call your name, Minister Donella Cranford.
Ms. Carolyn Crew. Ms. Natha Harris. Mrs. Felicia Morton. Diana Mould. 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 Sorry, sorry. Diana Mould. Ms. Doris B. Secca. Dr. Belinda White. Ms. Kay Wilkie. And Ms. Sherry Wilson. Hoosier, we want each nominee will receive a custom paperweight that reads, so grateful for each nominee's name, a Hoosier woman who lives a life of love empowered by God's living water. You are a living legacy. Thank you for the years of valued service. 2024 nominee, Legacy and Love in Action Award, Women's Day 2024. So we just wanted to make sure every legacy of love received recognition today. Our living legacies are each true treasures who have invested extended years of service, talents, gifts to inspire and uplift and expand their ministry areas. We thank you today for being amazing examples. We are grateful for the countless dedicated hours of building a strong foundation for the church. Hoosier, we accept this charge to advance this phenomenal movement that they have established today. It is time for us to create new legacies, new opportunities to serve God. The nomination committee had a very challenging responsibility to, to select four award recipients. The inaugural 2024 award recipients are Ms. Natha Harris, Dr. Belinda White, Doris B. Secca, and Sherry Wilson. Congratulations, ladies. The award recipients will be honored. Yes. The award recipients will be honored. You all can take your seat if you would like. The award recipients will be honored at the award ceremony during the Women's Day luncheon on Saturday, the 27th at 11 a.m. We're inviting all who's your members, family, friends to come together to celebrate all of our legacies of love. The tickets are on sale online and through event.com and the church office. Well, I just want to do a special thank you to the planning committee and the nomination committee for doing an excellent job and your willingness, willingness to serve in excellence. Thank you for, for the time. Good morning again, Hoosier. As you know, this is the fifth Sunday of the month, and we always celebrate Family and Friends Sunday. At this time, we would like for all members who invited someone to worship with us this morning to please stand. And will your guests also stand? All right. We would like to recognize Mr. James Daniel. Hey, man. We have a small token of appreciation.
Daniels, I hope that's to our favorite eating place. <laughs> oh, yes, sir. There you go, my friend. Yes. And last but not least, we would like to announce the trustee on duty for this week, Mr. Bruce Thompson. He is seated right here at my right. And I thank you for your attention. And again, happy Easter Day. Amen. Church, say amen. Church, say amen again. This time, I'm going to ask all of my children, all of my little children, if you would please come. Sister Felicia Martin has a very special word for you. All of my children, please come on down. All of my little ones. Come on down. Amen. Now, after service, the Easter Bunny is coming, so y'all come on down. I want you know, Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Easter Day. Happy Easter Day. Well, I brought something to help with my message this morning. I have this little bottle with some juice in it. Sure, it's all. <laughs> Prune juice. No. <laughs> and there are two ways of looking at this bottle of juice, right? Some people will look at this bottle of juice and say it's half empty. Mm-hmm. And then others will look at it to say that it is half full. So let's ask the church, who says it's half full? Who says it's half empty? Well, I can solve that problem. All right. Now what is it? Well, we should all agree that it's empty now, right? Mm -hmm. But guess what? We still won't all agree because some people will look at this bottle and be upset that it's empty. And then other people will be happy that it's empty because they can fill it back up with something else. All right. So I guess there are different ways to look at any situation, don't you think? So, and it reminds me of the Easter story. On the Sunday morning after Jesus was crucified, a woman named Mary went to visit the tomb where Jesus' body had been laid. And when she got there, she saw that the tomb was empty. Jesus was gone. She thought someone had stolen Jesus' body. So she was very upset. The empty tomb made Mary sad. She even stood outside the tomb and cried. And then two of Jesus' friends, Peter and John, came by, and they saw the empty tomb, but they didn't cry. Peter was kind of curious, maybe even a little confused, and the Bible says that John believed what he saw, but neither one of them cried like Mary. So those were three people. They all saw the same thing. One was sad, one was curious, and the other one believed. And I think that's pretty much the same way people react to the story of Jesus today. Some people hear the story about how Jesus died and was buried, and it mm -hmm. makes them sad. All right. And then others hear it, and they're happy because they believe that he died for us so that we can live forever. So just like my little bottle right here, it's what, empty? Or is it ready to be filled with something else? What you think? Well, the juice in here went from this bottle to here to here. Just like Jesus left the tomb empty, and now he lives forever in our hearts. All right, we believe that? So happy Easter. When you leave, I have something for you to remind you of the, our, our little juice story, okay? So come this way on our way back. But right now, let's bow our heads for prayer. Dear Lord, today we look at an empty tomb, but we are not sad. We are happy that Jesus is not in there. Help us all to see and believe that the empty tomb means Jesus has risen just as he said he would. Amen. Amen.
this Easter Resurrection Sunday, we have come to a very special part in our service where we all can participate. Amen? Amen? Scripture says, lay not up for yourselves treasures here on earth, where moth and dust does corrupt, and where thieves can break through and steal. But let us lay up for ourselves treasures in heaven, where moth and dust does not corrupt, and where thieves cannot break through and steal. For where our treasures are, there will our hearts be also. The songwriter said, you can't deed God's giving, no matter how you try. Why? Because the more you give, the more God gives to you. And you should just keep on giving because you know and believe that is true. That you know and believe that you can't deed God's giving, no matter how you try. God has given us the sunshine. God has given us the rain. God has given us the harvest and all its golden grain. God has supplied our every need according to his riches and glory. What more we ask shall we render unto the Lord for all of his blessings. Let us pray. Eternal and gracious God, we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you, O oh God, today for the many blessings you have bestowed upon us. And now, Lord, as we gather on this Resurrection Sunday morning, we pray your blessings upon these gifts, O oh God. Bless those who will give and those who desire to give from the bottom of their hearts but have it not to give. We pray that these gifts will be used in a way that will be uplifting and pleasing in thy sight and beneficial to the proclamation of your gospel through the Hoosier Church in this community, in this city, in this state, and throughout this world, O oh God. And when all is said and done, we'll give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. from whom all blessings flow.
waiting on you. I'm waiting on you. Hallelujah, church. Praise the Lord. Shall we praise the Lord this morning? Hallelujah. This is not an ordinary morning in Christendom. No, no, no. This is a the special morning. Can the church say amen this morning? Let us pray. Because of just over 2,000 years ago, what transpired on a hill, there are a people. There are a people who this morning have joy. There are a people this morning who have hope, who have peace. There are a people this morning who have forgiveness, who have empowerment, who have victory. Lord, this morning, we know that Golgotha is that hill. We know this morning that we are that people. We, the people this morning, are the Christians. We, the people this morning, are who's a united Methodist church. We, the people this morning, are those who play upon the instruments of music. We, the people this morning, are the ushers, the trustees. We are the visitors, we are the members, and we are those on live stream. Hallelujah this morning, Lord. We pray that we, the people this morning, will rise up as you did that morning. We will rise up and claim our joy. The joy which comes after weeping, which endure it only for a night. May we claim this morning our hope. The hope, Lord, which is not just an eschatological hope, but a hope that even now we stand with the assurance that you'll never leave us nor forsake us. May we this morning rise up, Lord, and claim that peace which passeth human understanding. May we this morning not rise up, Lord, and remember that we have been forgiven. Likewise, we ought to forgive. May we remember this morning to rise up, rise up, Lord, feeling and knowing that we are empowered, knowing this morning that we have the victory, even as the apostle said, O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? And Lord, this morning, we stand assured that there was victory over the grave. We stand with confidence that there was victory over the grave. Some, Lord, may debate which came first, the chicken or the egg. Some may debate this morning, Lord, who won what election. Some may even debate if you are black, white, green, or yellow. But there is no debate, Lord, that you rose from the dead. And because you live, we can face a tomorrow. We can face a tomorrow, Lord, when there is trouble with our finances. We can face a tomorrow, Lord, when our husbands are being problematic. We can face a tomorrow, Lord, when our wives are being problematic. We can face a tomorrow, Lord, when our children are being disobedient. We can face a tomorrow, Lord, when we look around us and we see in our family sicknesses. We can face tomorrow, Lord. Hallelujah. We can face tomorrow, Lord, because you know you will never leave us nor forsake us. You'll never leave us nor forsake us, Lord, because on that cross you said, it is finished. Just what was finished, Lord? What was finished? Was any doubt 
that we have victory. That whatsoever we bound on earth will be bound in heaven. And so this morning, Lord, we bind doubt. We bind evil around us. Because we have that authority this morning. And Lord, we thank you for the bounty you have given to us. You paid a debt which you didn't owe. And we couldn't pay a debt that we owed. Thank you, Jesus. As we continue to worship you this morning in the beauty of holiness, we bring before you a man's servant that your anointing would rest heavily upon him and that, Lord, you would speak to him, through him, and to us. We thank you for the power of prayer in Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let the church say amen. 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 Just before I assume my seat, unscriptedly, mind you, to the sisters resplendent in your beauty this morning. Go ahead, Reverend. To the brothers bedecked in your lovely shirts, pants, and suits. Again, welcome. And I want to encourage you this morning that you may believe next Sunday is Easter Sunday. That you may believe the Sunday after that is Easter Sunday. All right. That's my way of standing in the gap for pastor and saying, it is good to have you here. Come again. Amen. Resurrection Day to all. Mm -hmm. Our scripture this morning will be coming from Luke, the 24th chapter, and I will be reading verses 1 through 12. Again, that's Luke 24, verses 1 through 12. Mm -hmm. And it reads, But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again? Then they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with, whom, with them whom told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. All right, all right. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen clothes by themselves. Then he went home amazed at what had happened. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
that he gave. He gave his only son. And a son gave his life for me. Say it now. When he died. No greater love. Sing now. Nowhere you won't find it than a man who laid down his life for a friend. There's no greater love. No greater love than a man who lay down his life. For friends. Let me hear you this morning.
that's love. And somebody asked the question, what's love got to do with it? Huh? But that's not how the story is. For three days later, he rose again. That's love. Huh? Say it now. Somebody said, that's not how the story ends. That's not how the story ends. Three days later, he rose again. That's love. That's love. Whoa. That's not how the story ends. So glad it didn't end. It did not end on Good Friday. Because three days later, Jesus got it. Woo. The story is three days later, he rose again. That's love. That's love. The church say amen. The church say amen again. Amen. It's Easter Sunday. Happy Easter to all of you this morning. Huh? Yeah. Reverend? You're showing us your gardening skills. The church say amen. God is good. I can't hear you. God is good. And all the time, Come, let us see that the Lord our God is truly a good God and that his love, grace, and mercy endureth to all of us. Oh, how good it is when we come together on Resurrection Sunday to celebrate. I'm not going to hold you long. i got about 10 minutes here. I know you have to get home. you got other things you need to do today. Some of you are starting spring break. Amen. My prayer for you will be that you will travel safely and enjoy the time you will spend with your family. I ask that you would turn to your neighbor and repeat after me. It all comes down to this. It all comes down to this. Three seconds left in the fourth quarter. And our home team, the Atlanta Falcons, are trailing their opponents by two points. Our coach, whoever he is now, calls time out and on the field trots our kicker. The teams assume their positions. The referee blows the whistle. The ball is snapped. The kick is up and it's good. And the crowd just goes crazy while the other team leaves the field in defeat. Huh? It all comes down to this. You've been carrying around that engagement ring for weeks, if not months. You know you want to marry her. She's the love of your life. You have it all planned out, fellas. The special restaurant, the perfect song, perfect song. Back in my day when I first met Mrs. D, that was Luther Vandross, huh? Are you with me? A million days in your arms is never too much. Huh? Never too much, never too much, never too much. It all comes down to this, huh? The beautiful flowers, the right words to say. It's time you take a knee, look her in the eyes, and ask her to marry you. Now it's up to her to say yes or no. Are you with me? It all comes down to this. You've waited 20 weeks for the ultrasound. Or like many of us, the entire pregnancy for the delivery. 
It seems you can't wait any longer. You know your life is about to change and it's going to change drastically. Huh? You just want to know, Reverend, if it's pink or blue or maybe both. Huh? The ultrasound technician does his or her magic. And what a great day for the new mom and the new dad. It all comes down to this. This phrase points to a very defining moment. It calls to mind a critical stage in all of our lives. A momentous or an important occasion. In other words, this is what we've all been waiting for. Are you with me? Well, who's your and live stream viewers? As we celebrate Easter Sunday morning, I want all of us to know that this is one of those times. This is a very defining moment. This is one of the most important seasons and occasions of the Christian year. This is what we've all been waiting for. As parents, I know I have, we've been waiting for this moment because it's the beginning of spring, are you with me? And yes, we are all looking forward to the reduction from our Georgia natural gas bills as we go forward. Huh? Our children and grandchildren have been waiting for this moment. For as we all look around, they are wearing their Easter frock ribbon. Huh? And the Easter parade is in full bloom this morning. I don't know about you, but I've been waiting for this moment because it is the last time I will have chicken and dressing until Thanksgiving. It all comes down to this. Huh? In our text for today, the gospel writer Luke shared with us two important things about the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. First, the resurrection, my friends, is the most important event that ever occurred. Not the sinking of the Titanic, not desegregation, not the Emancipation Proclamation, not the election of Barack Obama as our first black president in the United States, not March the 8th, 1962, even though that date comes very close. Huh? The resurrection is the most important event ever. To paraphrase Michael J. Fox, who said family is not the most important thing. Family is the only thing. I say to you all today, the resurrection is not only the most important event. The resurrection is the only event that should matter to us today. The story of the birth, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ is a story, my friends, that changed this world. It has been and forever will be the most important event that has ever occurred and the most important story that has ever been told. Jesus' birth was normal. But my friends, I want you to know, even though it was normal, it was not unique. We know Jesus was born just like all the rest of us. He was born of a woman, Mary, his mother. She went through the normal process of pregnancy and delivery. They just did not have Emory Midtown or Piedmont Hospital back in that day. Huh? I would just say, just as all the other women, I believe Mary probably craved pickles and ice cream. Are you with me? I believe Mary probably wanted to run down to Walmart at two o'clock in the morning. Huh? Jesus' birth 
is totally unique. He wasn't just born of a woman, my friend. Jesus was born of a virgin woman. He was totally untainted by the sinful nature that we all inherit at our birth. His death was not a typical Roman execution. Jesus was not the first person to be crucified by Rome, and he was not the last. In fact, our scripture for today says that he was crucified between two criminals right there on that day. But Jesus' death was totally unique. Hmm? For in Jesus' death, Jesus paid the price for our past sins, our present sins, and our future sins. Satisfied the judgment of God against sin and purchased our salvation for all of us who will turn with faith and believe in him. Or oh, we all would say that Jesus' resurrection is unique, right? You understand what I'm saying? When was the last time you saw a resurrection around here, huh? But, I, but as I researched the Gospels, I realized that Jesus was not the only one to rise from the dead. Hear me now, everywhere that Jesus went, he had a reputation of interrupting funerals, huh? Oh, how I wish he would stop by Hoosier every now and then, huh? He turned so many funerals into family reunions because he raised them from the dead back to life. Jesus even gave his disciples the power to raise the dead. Jesus' resurrection is not as unique as we think it is. My friends and live stream viewers, I noticed that everyone else that was raised from the dead by Jesus, they died again. Their resurrection back to life was only temporary. Not Jesus, however. His resurrection is, is final and complete. He rose again and he is alive within us today. Jesus Christ is alive forevermore. So my friends, let me say it this way. I want you to know there are four major religions. You have Buddhism, Islam, Judaism, and Christianity. Each one of these religions rests on a very historical personality. Buddha, Muhammad, Abraham, and Jesus Christ. Oh, my friend, over the tomb of Buddha, you would write, occupied. Over the tomb of Muhammad, you would write, occupied. Over the tomb of Abraham, you would write, occupied. However, my friends, over the tomb of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, you would write, he is not here, he is risen today. Who's your? And live stream viewers, listen to what our text says on this Easter Sunday morning. Don't miss it. It all comes down to this. Jesus Christ is risen. He conquered death, hell, the grave, and all of his enemies. Jesus Christ is triumphant, victorious, and glorious today. I found that the account of the life of Jesus Christ is the only biography known to people that does not end in death and burial. This is one biography, Hoosier, that never ends. Oh, the story is told about a teacher who wanted to teach her Sunday school class a, a very important lesson. So she got three jars. And in each jar, she put several earthworms in that jar. In one jar, she poured alcohol. In the other jar, she put cigarette smoke. In the other jar, 
she put sugar. She took those jars, my friends, to her class and she showed it to the kids. In each of these jars, every single earthworm had died. The teacher asked her class, who can tell me the lesson we learned from these worms and from these jaws? One little boy spoke up real quickly. He said, I know the answer, ma'am. She said, okay. He said, the answer is this. If you drink a lot, smoke a lot, and eat a lot of candy, you surely won't get worms. It seems like the little boy missed the point, who's sure? And on this Easter Sunday morning, my friends, I don't know about you, but I don't miss the point. It all comes down to this. Jesus Christ has risen, and Jesus Christ is alive and well. Secondly, it is the most important decision that you will ever make according to scriptures, verses nine through 12. Not only is this the more, most important event that ever occurred, but it is also the most important decision you and I will ever make. It all comes down to this on this Easter Sunday morning. We are all faced with a choice on this Easter Resurrection Sunday. Believe in faith and experience a complete transformation of our lives or turn away in disbelief and reject the gift of salvation from our Lord and Savior. This is the most important decision we will ever make. In verses 9 through 12 of our text, the women who heard of the resurrection, they ran to announce to the apostles they went to tell others, my friends. In other words, they couldn't keep it to themselves. They just had to go out and tell somebody. When was the last time you told somebody that your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that he lives? But here are some very disturbing words. They did not believe them. Some of you are going to hear the words today. You're going to hear about Jesus Christ, his birth, his life, his death, and resurrection. And you are going to do the very same thing. You will walk out these doors after hearing this amazing story, get into those nice cars you are driving, return to that comfortable home God has provided for you, eat that wholesome Easter dinner that God has prepared for you, and you, will st you still will not believe. Let me challenge all of us today to consider the claims of Jesus Christ. This is not a fairy tale. It's not a myth or a legend. This is reality. And the same Jesus that rose again from the dead, he lives today and he can live within you through the presence of the Holy Spirit. They did not believe, but Hoosier and live stream viewers, Please notice how verse 12 in our text begins today. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. The others did not believe, my friend. But somewhere along the line, Peter was convinced and Peter believed. Some of you will hear of the empty tomb today and you'll walk away in unbelief. But others of you, you will hear about it and you will come as Peter did to see for yourself. And what you will discover is that Jesus Christ is who he says he is and that Jesus Christ has done what no other person could do. And that he offers salvation to all of us on this Easter Sunday morning. A young man, one day was on his way to visit his friend. His friend lived up in the hill country on a farm. He entered the farm area and began to explore the surroundings. 
And on the road that led up to the house of his friend, he had to pass by a barn. And as he got close to the barn, he stopped, perplexed and confused he was. Huh? He saw something that both impressed him and at the same time, it overwhelmed him. On the barn were 20 targets. In the middle of each target was a bullseye. And in the middle of each bullseye, there was a hole. Someone had used the barn as target practice. Huh? And whoever it was, they were very good shots. They were straight shooters. There was no other holes in the barn except for those holes in the middle of the bullseye and the center of the targets. He couldn't believe it. He started back up the road toward the house. When he met up with his friend John at the house, he said, before we began our day together, I've just got to ask you something, John. Who in the world did the shooting on that barn? John said, well, I did. The man was surprised. And he looked at John and he said, wait just a minute. There are 20 targets with 20 bullseyes with 20 holes in each one of those bullseyes. You mean to tell me, John, that you did that? John said, yep. Yep, I made every shot. Where in the world did you learn to shoot like that? John said, it's simple. I shot first, then I drew a picture of the target around the hole. Huh? A lot of us this morning are just like John. Maybe we know the right words to say. Maybe we know how to dress up for church on Easter Sunday, but it's not so much that we have hit the bullseye. Many of us, we just know how to paint well. But let me say this, it is truly possible for us to go through life going through the motions and never be on target. We have a choice to make. It's the most important decision we will make in this lifetime. Why? Because it all comes down to this. This is the moment that changes everything. We are faced with the reality of this gospel, the perfect and sinless life of Christ, his death for all of us on the cross, his victorious resurrection, and his offer to all of us, salvation. We are forced to make a choice, my friend. We can see ourselves and respond in repentance and faith, or we can hear the story and choose not to believe. Therefore, we remain unchanged, we remain unsaved, and we will remain under the judgment of God. This changes everything. It is a moment that separates victory from defeat. It separates winning from losing. It separates life from death. When many look at what happened on Good Friday, the death of Christ they only see defeat. Yet, on Easter resurrection, God's message, my friends, was completed. So for all of us this morning, I want you to know, regardless of what happened on Friday, I want you to know that resurrection this morning spells victory, and I spell it V-I-C-T-O-R-Y. And you want to know what it leads to? J-E-S-U-S, -E Jesus. And how we respond today to the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and his offer to us of salvation will determine whether we experience victory in our lives going forward or continued defeat as a result of our lives. It all comes down to this. Evan Ezra said, Easter 
is the only time when it's perfectly safe, my friends, to put all of your eggs in one basket. Easter is the only time when it's perfectly safe for you and for me to put all of my eggs in Jesus' basket. So as we prepare to leave here this morning, you, everybody has a basket. I want you to do this before you leave here today. Put love in your basket this morning. Put faith in your Easter basket this morning. Put hope in your basket today. Put salvation in your basket today. It's just like American Express. Don't leave home without it this morning because I can't assure you of a lot of things, but I can assure you of this, that the day will come when you're going to need to call on his name. Huh? The day will come when you're going to need someone and that someone will be Jesus Christ. I say it all the time. It's better to know him and not need him than to need him and not know him. It all comes down to this this morning. Huh? We all have a decision to make. We can choose the right way or we can walk away and continue the life that does not lead to salvation. I don't know about you, but I choose Jesus. I choose Jesus. And you know why? Because can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody treat me like the Lord. You know why? Because he's a friend when I'm friendless. He's a brother when I'm brotherless. Huh? He's a bridge over troubled waters. He's my way maker when it seems there is no way. He's the sun in the midst of total darkness. Huh? He's my life raft when it seems like I'm drowning. Anybody know Jesus this morning? I want you to know that he got up from that grave this morning for you, 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 and me. And because he lives, because he lives, we can face tomorrow. So as we stand on this Easter Sunday morning, If you're here, like to come and unite with Jesus Christ. Come, give your hand to the preacher, but most importantly, give your life to Jesus Christ. The invitation to discipleship is extended this morning. If you're here, would you come? Somebody said, God said, they call, they called him Jesus. He came to love, heal and forgive. He lived just to buy our part. There's an empty grave out there this morning that proves our Savior lived. Somebody said, because. I can face tomorrow because he lives. All fear is gone because I know he holds my future and life. And life is worth the living just because he A newborn, baby. a newborn baby and feel the love and, feel the and joy he brings but, but greater still this calm assurance this, this child can face the uncertain days because he lives somebody said because all he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because I know he holds my view and life, and life is worth 
the living just because he is. And then one day, I'll cross the river. I'll fight life's final war. The war And then a death give way to victory. I'll see the light of glory and I know my Savior lives. Oh, he lives. Anybody hear this? Good morning, Hoosier. Good, Good morning. morning. What a wonderful, blessed, and holy day it is today. And Pastor Dean, it is my absolute distinctive pleasure to introduce and welcome to the Hoosier congregation this morning, Mrs. Elon Osby, uh, who comes to us from Christian experience. And we know that she's here with us because we've seen her worshiping with us for many months and sharing the Holy Spirit. So we thank you, Lord, for bringing her to us this morning. Her birth month is not March. <laughs> I'm sorry. We're going to send sorry, you back. Pastor. <laughs> yeah, we're going to send you back. We only have March folk in this congregation. <laughs> her birth month is July. So July birth month, people, you'll want to welcome her. Uh, right. get out of town. The only thing I want to say is that it was time, and I was putting it off, and I was struggling right there in the pew, and uh, God said, this is now. This is the time now. Amen. She gave us a December member, though. So what <laughs> She gave you who? A December member. Oh, she's a you December? And you have our sympathy. <laughs> Sister Alby, 
it, it, you know, you, you worked me hard. <laughs> Trying to get you in here has been hard work. But you know what? Faith is the source of all things hoped for. Yes, it is. And it is the evidence of all we are yet to see. Yes, it is. Thank you. You have blessed us here at Hoosier on this Resurrection Easter Sunday morning. And behalf, on behalf of the officers, the staff, and congregation here, we welcome you to your new church home. Thank you. I say to you, we will only be as strong as our weakest link. We're all on the upward world trying to make it in. If you see me stray, if you see any one of us stray, please tap us on the back. Help us return to the pathway that leads to salvation. We love you. So on behalf of this congregation, I'm going to ask you these questions. Will you support God's ministry through the Hoosier Memorial United Methodist Church with your tithes, your gifts, your service, your witness? Yes, I will. God bless you. Yes, I will. Congregation, I commend to you Ms. Elon Owsby, our newest church member. Would you please receive her now with a standing ovation this morning? Yes! Huh? Amen. The church say amen. Now, all of my children, all of my children, get your baskets ready. The Easter eggs, I understand, are just outside the door. They're waiting on you. But let me ask you this now. Uh, I got a lot of people around here just like me. They don't walk very well, so please, young people, have some mercy on us, please. Huh? Huh? Let, let us get out the way, all right? I want you to let, let us get out the way, all right? Okay? Amen. So good to see all of you this morning. God loves you, so do I. Thank God for your presence here this morning. And remember, something good this week is going to happen to you because Jesus Christ of Nazareth is passing your way. Everybody sing, everybody sing, let everybody sing, amen, amen, everybody sing, let everybody sing, let everybody sing, amen, amen. All the sisters sing. I can't hear you. All the sisters sing. Oh, y'all can't do it. All the sisters sing. Let's show them how to do it, brother. All my brothers sing. All my brothers sing. There you go. Come on, brother. All my brothers sing. And now, my Christian friends, as we prepare to leave our time together, but never from the presence of our Lord God on this Resurrection Sunday morning, may his love, grace, and mercy be above you, beneath you, and all around you, to shield you, to keep you, to uphold you, and comfort you, until we all shall meet again. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and all of God's people said, Amen. Happy Easter to you. Hit it now. Come on, young lady. <laughs>